Okay. Here's what it looks like with the handles on. These are all just set in place, but there's the, the new hand wheels there. You know, we're replacing them with the old hand wheels, of course. The old new hand wheels, these were the ones that originally came on the machine. You know, this one was mounted, these two had to be put on. They're virtually the same size all the way around. And I probably should weigh them and, and see what the weight is. But anyway, we're going to get these cleaned up, sandblasted, powder coated, and then we'll put them back on. Now, when I was editing video, actually this morning I was sitting finishing up editing on it. It really sounded like in part two that I really had buyer's remorse with, with buying this mill. And that's not the case at all. You know, there's things I don't like about it. There's things I think could be improved on it. There's things I will improve on it. But I really don't have buyer's remorse about it at all. Um, like I say, I sounded really hesitant. And I, I think I'm coming across like I really do have buyer's remorse on it. And I really don't. I think it's going to be a fine mill. I think it's going to do everything I expected it to do. Would I like it to do more than what it is and be a little bit different in some respects? Yeah, I would. But I, I'm not really complaining. There's there's some definite complaints I've got about it. But it's nothing that I can't overcome. And, and it's part of what I consider purchasing either a new or a used machine. There's going to be things that you have to address. So, anyway, just wanted to clear that up. I'm not... I'm not saying, you know, I'm really sorry I bought this mill or anything, because that's not the case at all. I'm very happy to have it sitting here. Now, other observations that I have had, and I just really noticed this last night, was on this table, and as I said, I haven't done anything to this table other than just to clean it off, basically, with WD-40, and, and I, I ran the mill a little bit yesterday. When I was, I had to do some machining on the, on the hand a little bit, I basically just drilled and tapping holes, and uh, a couple of them in the hand wheels to adapt it. So I used it for that. It's going to work fine. Now I haven't uh, I haven't swept the top of the table to find out how flat it is or how true it runs to the rest of the mill or anything. Um, and when I swept across the front edge of the table, um, I fast forwarded through a lot of that just because it was boring to me too. I know it's going to be boring to you watching it or was boring to you watching it because you would have seen it before this this part. The, the front of the table, when I swept it, it ran fairly true up to probably a third of the way across in this direction. It ran spot on. From there, it very slowly started to climb to the end. When I swept back the other way, it was exactly the same thing. Um, that's a half a tenth indicator. Both of those indicators are point zero zero five. you know, half a tenth. So... Um, it, it's fairly sensitive. I was, I'm relatively happy with those readings. You know, I mean, that's not a whole lot in that, oh, uh, what is that distance? That distance is going to be about eight that way, eight, another nine, probably 17 or 18 inches of sweep. Why, um, that little bit of climb on it for what I want this machine to do, that's going to, that's going to work really well. It's far above what the, what the G1007 is after, you know, 25 years, it's well used and abused. So that's all well and fine. Now the other thing I noticed, and, and at first I noticed it just as a little bit of difference in sheen on the table, but on this end here, on each section, in, in this section right here, and let me bring it down so you can see a little bit better. Right here in this section, all the way across, here, 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 and here, there's some stone marks, scrape marks, whatever the case may be, where they'd actually probably had some corrosion or something there that they were actually smoothing out. So it doesn't, and it was done after the table had been uh, ground. So there's some definite markings here where somebody has taken a stone to it, taken some paper, done, done something to it. And when you get to looking, why there's a little bit of pitting, and I think it's pittings in the casting itself. Um, so there's some markings there, and you can feel them. So is, is that going to affect anything on this on this machine for the way I plan on using it or how I'm going to use it? No, it's not. It's down at this very end. Um, chances are nothing's going to be machined clear at this end of the table for one thing. And the other is even if it is, I doubt there's any, any variation at all. All they've done is taken it down enough to where you can, where it's, it's uh, cleared those, those pitting, corrosion, whatever the case may be on that end of the table. Uh, here's what we look like before our powder's baked. So, looks awful bright green, but once it bakes, why it darkens up quite a bit.
So we're just about to throw these in the oven. I got all three of them to this stage. So they go in at, I believe it's 350 degrees for about uh, 10 minutes. Okay, well out of the powder coat oven. Green's a little bit brighter, which I knew to start with. It's what I use as an RCBS green. But uh, it is green. So that's what we're going to run with. Looks better than blue. on there like that. So I've got just a little more cleanup to do on those and uh, then we'll actually put them together and install them the way they're supposed to be. I think the project for tomorrow is probably pulling the digital read off off the G0 or the G1007 and starting to do the setup for it on here. Where do I start? <laughs> okay got my little slightly mismatched colored hand wheels here which this is a brighter green but it's green you know we're working on a milling machine it doesn't match the enamel green hammerite paint that is originally on the machine and you know I could mix some paint I could match colors a little bit and for right now I'm not gonna screw with it I've got a whole whole lot more improvement on the uh, on the controls with these hand wheels than I had with the original hand wheels. They just got a better feel to them all the way around. Now, the project for the day is I'm going to start mounting the digital readout to it. I think I'm going to start with the X axis and uh, the plan right now is to, mount, to uh, mount the scale on the back side of the table. I think once we get everything set up, I'm going to have clearance there. I don't think there's a there's going to be a need to completely run that table to the um, back of its travel uh, across the y-axis travel to pinch that scale um, after having a vise on here which is primarily what will be on this table probably why I think we've got enough clearance I think everything will be fine so that's kind of the, the plan for the day or the plan for right now anyway is to get started on that all right nothing high-tech about this machining operation at all I've taken the uh, angle iron that I was using as a scale protector for the x-axis and I'm going to utilize the same mounting on it. It looks like it will fit on fine. I'm probably going to build a new back bracket to um, offset the head so it clears the head. And we're going to trim an inch off of this. It's going to be tight. I think I lose a little bit of Y travel there. But I'm probably okay with that, I think. It's, you know, I'm losing a quarter inch. Plus it will act as a positive stop to keep from ramming the scale into the back of the head. And I would rather have it... Um, mounted on the back of the of the uh, table than I would on the front like I had it before. It's just out of the way more a little bit. That's where I'm going to mount the x-axis. Like I say, I'm using the same mounting as that I had before. I'm offsetting it down this way and I'll show you how I've, how I've set it up. Um, this may be interesting just because all I've done is I've clamped my angle down to the table with the existing T-slots or the two T-nuts that are basically a vice hole down that came with the mill. And um, you know, hopefully I've got a big enough slitting saw I'm going to run along here that I can get most of this. And then I'll probably have to turn it around or do something different to get the, the last little bit. We're just shaving an inch off.
All right. Well, this is pretty well slit. The uh, I left just a little bit at each end, which should probably just fold right off. We're going to radius those ends by hand anyway. This gives me a piece for a standoff to uh, set my little offset for the reading head on the back side of this. I'm not pushing the machine hard at all. We're just running it, see how it is. Um, and it runs good. I'm really happy with it so far. So we'll just continue on. I'm going to unbolt this, clean it up, deburr it by hand. I'll radius the edges. And that gives me my back support to, to mount the uh, head on. So here's going to be my mounting for the x-axis on this digital readout. Now this is the piece of angle that I just cut. This is also the piece of angle that I had the digital readout mounted on the front of the G1007. So I'm going to use this basically as my whole mounting system again. Um, this scale is actually a little bit longer than this table, but it's going to work out fine. A couple of different ways you can mount them, and I've mounted them you know, both ways between mills and lays with these is I have mounted them with only one mounting bracket on one end and then the scale head allowing the other end to float. And that actually helps with alignment like on a rough casting on the on the back side of the Sheldon lathe I think I've only anchored one side I think the other I've allowed to float and that helps take up any inaccuracies in the castings themselves for alignment. So in this case where we're working off of two machine surfaces it's not going to be an issue at all. We're going to mount um, we're going to mount our scale solid. Now on one end we're going to use our mounting hole that we've got here and we're going to drill and tap it directly into the back of the bed. And on the other end we're going to extend beyond the, the bed itself with this. So rather than shorten up the scale what I'm going to do is I'm going to just bolt these two together because we've already got alignment there and then I'm just going to drill and tap someplace probably just on this end at this end of the table into the table and mount the aluminum angle there. So the aluminum angle is the, the mounting point and then the scale is going to mount the aluminum angle is kind of basically the way it works. And then rather than use the mounting bracket that was on the back of the scale that I had before which was a factory mounting bracket and it would have mounted uh, just like this and it'll mount onto the onto the uh, y-axis onto the uh, lower casting there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a new bracket like this that will screw onto the back of the of the reader head just like it did before but it's going to offset so that this reader is down this way a little bit that way when um, y-axis is cranked all the way in why there's no way that the scale head can contact the casting here so if it does bottom out which I believe it will if it's compressed all the way why the aluminum angle will act as a hard stop against the back of the of the uh, vertical casting so that's the way I plan on mounting it and um, you know it's not a not a difficult mounting system like I say I'm gonna go ahead I'll mount the uh, I'll mount the aluminum angle itself and uh, it's just a matter of laying it out, drilling, tapping two holes. Now I'm going to have to drill another hole and figure out positioning on the aluminum angle here. Um, but other than that, then everything will bolt right up. And then I'll go ahead and build the, the bracket and, and drill and tap it into the, uh, into the Y-axis casting. Castings drilled pretty easy. They seem to be pre pretty consistent and seem to be a pretty good casting. Now I did space the uh, angle iron down a little bit, well eighth of an inch, which would have been the thickness of this. Um, just to let it set down off the edge of the bevel, that way hopefully any crap that is on there will fall on top rather than wedging in between the two surfaces. So it will mount just about there it appears. Okay, I won't bother to bolt it down too tight because it's all going to come off again anyway. Let 
but that'll tuck up there pretty nicely. We're just below table level, beyond the bevel, so anything that gets on there will hit and slide on off. And uh, this end's tight. And our scale head, we want to mount right in here someplace. So we're going to have to offset our little bracket to set underneath. Let me uh, bring this camera down so we can see a little bit better. Okay, and here's our scale head. We want one end of our bracket to drill and mount right there. And then we'll just let that run on across and back behind the scale head and it screws into the back of the scale head. Give us a little better view of it, maybe. Maybe not. Okay, I can't get us in much closer than that. One end of our bracket will mount right here. And it'll extend over, up and over, and go behind the scale. And there's two screws that mount it to the back of that. Okay, I don't believe we can be that spot. I guess we are that spot on. All I did was uh, shove the vise hard back against the hold down bolts. Maybe that's a half attempt across. I'm not going to worry about that. One of the things I am going to change is the mounting on this vise. Um, it uh, mounts there. There's probably clearance, but you can't get full use of the vise. You can't get to this back jaw even with it backed all the way out. So that's one of the first projects is going to be some new hold downs. And I think we're just going to build four hold downs and we'll dedicate them to this but we'll just do a straddle style clamp so the wedge is built in on the back and our bolt will go down to a T-nut and it'll just grab and pull it down. Um, I think we'll do four. We want to slide the vise back this way. Oh, probably a half or three quarters of an inch is my guess. And um, then we'll adjust our hold downs. Okay, vise is trammed in. What I'm going to do is I've just got a piece of stock here. I'm going to emulate this clamp, except we're going to do it out of aluminum. This one's got a little too much offset. So we'll just um, clamp this in the vise. We're going to square up the edges very lightly on this thicker end of it. And uh, then we'll go ahead and drill it for our holes here in the uh, center. And um, we won't do this one yet. And then we'll go ahead and relieve it. So we've just got a, oh, an eighth of an inch probably. We'll uh, be plenty. And then we'll set up how, far, how long we want it, set our offset, and cut it that way. At least that is my current plan. So this is the first time we're actually going to mill with this.
part of our packing crate. So we've got an R8 in here. Let's run a 3 8 end mill. machine the top of this off at all because our vice is too far forward, too far back. <laughs> yeah, that vice is going to have to move. Okay, so what we will do, get this back up out of the way. All we're interested in doing is cleaning off this, uh, these two edges. So we'll run a fly cutter across there. machining it all the way around too because we're not going to be able to reach it with the vise sitting there. Oh, we've got to change this insert out. We've got a steel insert in. Also give us an idea of how well in cram we are. Now this is part of the main problem with this setup right here in this vice setup is the way it's laid out you cannot reach clear to the back of the vise so consequently I can't set this up and drill and tap at the position it's in. One of the very first projects or one of the very next projects that's going to happen for this is a new set of hold down clamps on this. Um, to finish machining this what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the whole vise out to this outer set of T-slots I think and uh, we'll see if that gives us the gives us enough positioning to get where we want to be. Which means we have to go through the whole process of reserving this vice out. here see I actually don't like the vice clear out that far because that makes it yeah we'll be able to machine it with it there but that's an awful lot of overhang ideally I'd like to have this probably midway between we'll at least get that vice a little bit closer to being 
over the center of that head. All right, well, I've been machining the brackets for the back of this, which has been what's going on, but I had to take a little detour. I had to raise the mill up a little bit, and I raised it another three and a half inches. I just, I knew it was too low before we had it on some 4x4s down underneath, and all I've done is cribbed it up on another pair of 4x4s to raise it up a little bit. So we've raised it another three and a half inches. So, in essence, from the way it was shipped with a 34-inch table height, We've raised it about seven inches since then. Um, to me, it's still a little bit lower than what was on the G1007, um, but I think I can work with this. You know, I'll, I'll run it a little bit like this, and then we'll decide if we need to raise it a little bit more, if it's acceptable, whatever the case may be. And then we may or may not come up with a little bit more elegant solution for it sitting on. But um, it's sitting here. It's secure. It's not going any place. The... 4x4s will actually absorb a little of the vibration, so it may not be a bad thing. But we'll run it like this and see what happens. So, anyway, at least I feel like the controls are usable to me. It was, uh, my back would have been killing me by the end of the day running this, leaning over all day. So.
There's the finish off of that super fly. So, got a few little marks, but nothing you can even feel across there. That gives a nice finish. So this is just kind of a trial and fit. You know, fit it, try it, machine it a little bit till I get the uh, thickness right. There's not a real good way to measure it. I haven't pulled the scale back off, but when I think I've got it pretty close, well, I will. Uh, I'll go ahead, pull the scale off, mount it back onto the back of the scale, and then we'll do a test fit again. And she just cycles right on through there like that. What I did is I've used my existing angle iron. We saw me machine the top of it down so we're a little bit more compact. Now I've taken and built a new bracket for the back of this. That's what I was machining earlier. And I drilled and tapped it for a cable strain. And we're hot melt glued up here. That's, that seals it and holds, holds wiring pretty well. So we did that. Now we've got a clamp around it and it's uh, clamped into the bracket. And then we've drilled and tapped the lower part of the bracket back into the the end of the y-axis casting and it's just a 1024 tapped in there make sure you get your alignment right and everything I've already had it hooked up to the scale to the uh, reader head and it's uh, it's spot on it matches up with the with the uh, hand wheels and uh, I'm really happy with that mounting I think I'm probably going to be a little bit more fancy I think I'm going to probably pull it off one more time take the brackets and the, the rail here and go ahead and powder coat them the same green as the handles just to just because they're never going to be off here again anyway, so we'll uh, hopefully anyway. So we'll just go ahead and set it up, and uh, then I think we'll start on the uh, on the y-axis.